Okay, you cannot bite. You can't gouge the eye. Please don't hold the fence. No fish hooking. And we have a 30-minute time. All right, there are several ways you can win. You can knock your opponent out. That opponent can tap out. The corners can throw in the towel or can go to the judges. This is what the quarterfinals will look like. Nutter, Carvalho, Barlin, Andrews, Smith, Selva, and Bochenchen against Palhares. All right, the tail of the tape, our first fight, Nick Nutter. He's the wrestler from the United States. He will be fighting that man right there, Lucio Carvalho, and he is a local, nicknamed California, I guess. Well, I expect Nutter to try and shoot early and try and take his opponent down since he is a wrestler. That's his game plan, and nobody's been able to stop these guys so far. All right, this one is underway, our opening bout of the night. WBC number five here in Recife, Brazil, as both men exchange light blows as we're getting ready to go. Yeah, Carvalho will try and soften up. Oh, nice, nice round it, kick. It was a beautiful kick, but as you can see, that's what Ned Nutter wants him to do. He wants him to kick, and as you can see, he moves right in, closing the distance. Well, Lucio came up with a couple of good elbows, and now he's pulling on the trunks, and, well, there's a little... Uh, that's an interesting sight for the ladies. Anyway, we get back to the action here as Nutter has his man, Lucio, pinned against the fence over there. Yeah, you'll see. Now he's pull he's actually trying to push him back up against it. He had him there. He'll t I don't know whether he's going to want to use the fence or pull him back in the middle of the ring. Nutter very comfortable in this position. This is where he wants to be. In his last major fight, Nutter broke bones in both of his hands, so it'll be interesting to see how he strikes here tonight. See if he is effective with the, uh, with the strikes. And there he goes with the left hand, and you notice that his hands are bound by tape. Yeah, he's a tough, tough puncher. You can hear those punches just pushing off. Ooh. Again, he's 240 pounds, very strong guy. You can see them work, both working from the bottom. Carvala pushed up against the fin. That's a real... Uh, a lot of pressure on the back of the head. He's all, you can tell he's not liking that too much. No, and it looks like Nutter's just trying to rub his head in the face of his opponent as he stands up and strikes. Nutter is just so much, so powerful here. There, I don't know what Carvalho can do in this position. Once a freestyle wrestler of this caliber gets his opponent in this position, I don't know if there's anything anybody can do. Not used to seeing a couple what a fighter lying on his back like that. They're normally high flying kicks and everything of that nature. And we're not seeing that right now because Nick Nutter has him in the guard. He is in the guard, I should say. Guard is broken. Nutter gets back up as he strikes little shots with the left hand, but they all add up, don't oh, they, Greg? I, I could hear those and almost feel them from <laughs> over here. Nutter, a very strong guy. Carvalho really doing what he can right now. He'll try and keep that tight guard. But again, against wrestlers, that doesn't do so much. Nutter fine in that control. You can see he keeps that wide base, does Nutter. He keeps the knees outside of Carvalho, uh, uh, not able enabling him to get, roll out in any sort. You see he'll try and, Carvalho trying to get that, that foot in there, but unable to do it. But he's trying to attack from down low and it's not working as he takes a couple of good right hands to the side of the head there's another shot and oh a huge right hand big and right hand this is over big it is right over hand by Nutter. oh big right hand by nutter carvalho said i have felt that power just too much and that was it a stunning stunning end of this fight nick nutter got a little distance and there goes the hands into the air and he Pounded his opponent with a huge right hand. Yeah, anytime Nick Nutter gets in that position, his opponents are going to be in big trouble. Notice Nutter, the opening sequence of the fight. He congratulated his opponent when he came in, and he actually got a nice knee in the opening segment. He says, boy, that was a great knee, but I still won the fight. Yeah. So let's go to your, George down there for the interview with Nick Nutter. Paul Varlin's a polar bear. Yeah, 285, not 385. He's a trap fighter against Valder Dos Anjos and Anjus, I should say. And interesting, too, I have not seen him out and about here in Recife. No, he's been laying low. He's been totally focused. Let's go to the action. Okay, oh, oh and Valder right. comes right out with a side flying sidekick. A beautiful right hook by the little man. Didn't seem to phase the taller Varlins as both decide they want to stand up and strike. Oh, Varlins Feeling turns his man around with a jab. Big roundhouse haymaker right hands by the much smaller fighter, although nice round kick to the lower leg of Varlins, and then he tries to go up high with it. Yeah, he'll try and do pretty much everything he can. There he is again with the right hook. He needs big shots to hurt the polar bear because he's already hit him a couple of times, but Varlins just keeps coming. 
I have seen the polar bear get hit by much harder oh. strikes than this, but boy, a great roundhouse right hand right on the kisser of Arlen's. He's throwing those side kicks. He'll continue to keep active. Big right hands. He's really throwing everything he's got. And he's also using the uh, legs very effectively. Oh, a nice jab by Varland. Beautiful jab. Catches his opponent right on the temple. Yeah, see, this guy will throw hooks and work that low leg kick. But again, is it going to be enough polar bar? Is he trying to lock in a guillotine? He'll, uh, he'll try. Let's see what happens. He Oh, a great a nice knee. knee by Varland's. Varland, something I've not seen from Paul. No, he's really trying to mix up his arsenal and a round kick from Varland's. <laughs> he's trying to stand there and box. He also told us that he has been working on his boxing skills. He's been really, instead of just being a tough guy, he's been working on the ground. He just said a nice right hook again. That right hook is getting there by Anjos. Boy, there, you're exactly right. And he tries to set up another kick that's not, not effective with that, but... Obviously, Anjus is much, much quicker than Varlins. Varlins, though, has quite a reach, although he did take a left hand. Yeah, when, when, when Varlins hits him, look, that one just knocks him around the ring. Varlins is so big and strong, you don't need to take too many of those to get a nice headache and get knocked out. Well, the Brazilians chanting for their much smaller countrymen. Will it help him out? Will it get him going as the crowd now settles back down? Every time, though, he throws a big right hand, like he's thrown so many haymakers, several have landed, this crowd gets into it. Yeah, Varlin's just continuing to stalk his opponent. He'll, he's willing to exchange with this guy because whatever this guy can take, Varlin's can take ten times more. That's how, oh, a beautiful left hand by Varlin's. Two nice jabs. Varlin's really nice cut opening up over the right eye of Anjos. Boy, I know Anjos. Oh, oh huge beautiful. right. I don't... I don't know how much more this guy can take. Yeah, I don't either. Varlins is hitting him, oh, standing big up with right some very sh strong shots. Anjus came back, though, with the right hand, but he quits. That's it. He taps. He actually doesn't tap. He just says, it's over. I can't take too many of those. No. Wow. Varlins, though, the sportsman that he is, he taps his opponent on the shoulder. He said, good effort, son. I'm going on to the next round. The polar bear, Paul Varlins of the USA, defeats his Brazilian opponent as he... Just took too much punishment, Greg Friedman. Yeah, he really did. He tried to stay in there, tried to be tough. He came in here. He was the one cold man inside the ring, not shaking hands with anybody. Again, training under the death master. He is a Valley Tudo fighter. But Paul Varlins is just too big, too strong, and he is the champion of his first fight of the night. And I think after that cut, that just kind of said, uh-oh, the red flag went up. And then Varlins now going off, and I think uh, he's going to stop and talk with uh, our ringside interviewer, Georges. Yeah, you can see his eye just swelling up already. He took a big, couple of big shots from Varlins. Look at it again in slow motion. Varlins comes in and watch this. This is just pretty good action early on. This was a good action fight as Varlins connects with the right and the left. Uh, and that, and that left right cut his eye right there. Yeah. And then he kind of walks around and goes, nah. Actually, that a cut happened earlier than that, but he said that, that was just too much. That's so. just too much power. Varlins too big, too strong. It's okay, our next bout features a man from Denver, Colorado in the United States, Patrick Smith, the kickboxer, against Marco Silva, the Brazilian. Patrick Smith fought Uas and lost. Yes. Silva fought Uas, and it was a draw. So it'd be interesting as a common opponent. Silva, though, has not fought in 10 years, as you vividly pointed out a moment ago. So yeah. it'll be interesting to see if there's a lot of rust. There has to be. Pat Smith, though, is a striker, and he does it right there with the right hand as he pins his man to the fence and then pushes him down, and now he'll try and strike. Patrick Smith doing what he does best, throwing lefts and rights as he is on top in a very dominant position. Great elbows to the shoulders. That ought to bring those arms down, along with those really short shots to the head. Nice strikes to the head. Elbows, lefts and rights. And I don't know if Silva knows where they're coming from, Greg. Yes, yeah, Silva tried to close the distance quick. Pat Smith, look at these beautiful punches. Pat Smith reversed it on him, and we saw him do that against Marco Huas and come out on top as well. Unfortunately, he got caught in an ankle lock. That should have been a much better fight, Patrick Smith than Huas. Smith getting up. And knowing... he charges him. He bull rushes his opponent. Nice exchanges by both Oh, fighters. a huge uppercut with a right hand by Patrick Smith. And there is a nasty cut over the right eye of Selva. Yeah, Selva backing up a little bit now. Not sure what he's going to do here. He took some big shots there by Smith. Smith coming in very confident. Stop. Smith on the right. Silva on the left. Silva tries a kick to the side there. Doesn't really connect or do much damage. 
He's got nice combinations, though. Smith is the best stand-up fighter in the show here tonight. And look at him, throwing lefts and rights, a nice knee there. A beautiful right there, unloading really on Silva. Patrick Smith has been trying. Oh, there he sh shakes yeah. his right hand. Yeah, I think he hit him hard right on the butt with that. He's got a bad right hand. I don't know if he might have re-injured that. I don't know. Silva came back with some great left hands in close that pushed Patrick Smith back. Yes, Smith holding those mm. fingers open right now. We can kind of try and get a look at that. Silva moving around the ring, taking some beating so far, but he's a champion. He's not going to give up easy. Great Muay Thai kick. Low. Oh, an elbow by Smith. Beautiful it's elbow. It's all legal, folks. No holds barred. Smith with combinations, lefts and rights. Smith just really teeing off on Silva right now. Well, he is peppering him with lefts and right hands. Silva has not had the answer thus far. Beautiful left leg kick and coming back up and over with the right. Boy, Patrick Smith has been very impressive. And Silva, he, you can tell there's some ring rust. And, oh, but he comes back with some short, chopping uppercuts. Yes, yeah, Silva. connect. Silva's a champion. Let me tell you, this guy's not going to give up easy. Pat Smith is really going to have to beat the hell out of him <laughs> to get him to give up. Well, they are grappling along the fence there, and you're not supposed to hold that fence, young man, as blood spews down the backside of Marco Silva. Yeah. Patrick Smith shaking that right hand again. You know, he's showing it to Silva. I don't know how sharp that is of him. You might want to deny it a little bit. Look at Silva now slapping at that hand, knowing that that is in big pain. Look, he's going after that hand. Smart move. Yeah, see the weakness and work it. Well, I'll tell you, great chess game going on here right now. Patrick Smith came out like a ball of fire. And Marco Silva now coming back somewhat as he mounts his own attack as he really goes after what appears to be an injured right hand of Patrick Smith. Yeah. Silva really trying to be patient, not giving up thus far. But so far, Pat Smith has just went off on him. But, but as we've seen, Silva has weathered the storm. But he continues to back up in a defensive posture as Patrick Smith will continue to press it. Oh, that's nice a great, leg kick. great leg kick that drops his opponent. Smith is one of the most powerful leg kickers in the sport. He really has devastating kicks, as we've seen in his previous matches. He can break you down very piece by piece. Well, he is a... A Back world championship kickboxer, and there's another great kick down low. Oh, great left and rights to the face. Great striking by Pat Smith. Yeah, really, he's showing us here a lot tonight. He's coming in strong. I don't know how bad that right hand is. He's he's trying to stay away from it a little bit. You can see he'll use the right round kick. Woo! Nice spinning spin back fist. Almost connecting. Very close. Boy, if that thing hits, that's such curtains. Yeah, Smith's very savvy, though. He's been in the ring way too many times for that to work against him. And he continues to press the attack here in Recife, Brazil. World Valley Judo Championship number five. Yeah, Silva just taking a beating. Just a little, you, as you said, you can see the rust on him. A beautiful kick to the side of the face by Smith. Boy, he got his leg up there. Yeah. Man, that's, that, that is just great extension, great athleticism. And Smith with the left and the right as he chases his opponent around the ring. Patrick Smith trying to mount another attack. Yeah, he's really doing everything oh! he wants. Silva cannot take any more. That fight is over. It's over. It is. I mean, Patrick Smith, though, shaking that right hand. I wonder how badly that's injured. But he was incredibly impressive yeah, he really here was. in his first quarterfinal bout. Yeah, as we said earlier, he was very disappointed in his last fight against Marco Lewis. Felt he could have done better, should have done better. He, he, as you saw in their initial stand-up, if, if people at home have seen that fight, it was a good exchange of leg kicks. Him apparently getting the better of Huas in the kicks and then rolling on the ground and just made a bad mistake, got caught by a beautiful move by Huas with an ankle lock. We'll look at it in slow motion. And there is all the action, and this is really where it kind of ends. Marco Silva says, you know what? Let me think here. You just beat me like a pulp, and uh, I just had enough. And, and a brave man he is, but 10 years away from the game, and that really showed. Yeah, the fans still giving him a big crowd, big round of applause. They really love him here. He's got a lot of gonads being back here in the ring. Boy, you're going to like this one, Greg. Give us this matchup. Yeah, Igor Valchenchen against Tulo Palheres, a Chinese kickboxer against a, a Russian kickboxer. Palheres, he's got a lot of ring experience. He came in here, he knows the type of people that he's fighting. He's got good stand-up and ground skills. I expect these guys to be, this fight to be very similar to our last one, except a little more well-balanced. By the way, Palheres took this fight at the last moment, so it's, it'll be interesting to see what kind of shape he is in. As we get underway, Igor Volchekchen 
against Tulio Pajeres. Pajeres with his backside to us right now. He'll work off the jab. He's the dark-haired gentleman, and he's got a good jab and a nice round kick, front round kick. These guys are both stand-up fighters, so I don't know if the, either one of them really wants to go to the ground. Oh, nice round kick to the uh, lower leg of Pajeres by Vochekton. Igor is, uh, is one tough cookie, ladies and gentlemen. And look at the size and, and, and the thickness of his legs. Yeah, he's only about 5 feet 10, 5 feet 10 and a half inches tall, but he is thick and hard as nails. The guy's legs are so, you'll see him try to work that inside leg kick, nice kick. You imagine receiving one of those kicks from one of those powerful legs of his? That's got to hurt. Yeah, no, You can feel that over here ringside. Yeah, we saw him work in the bag, and boy, I've never seen anybody hit a bag as hard as he has. Now he's going to try and turn Pujeres into a bag and try and hit him as hard as he can. But I got a funny feeling this Brazilian, you know, the immense pride. I don't know. I, I just, it's not a walkover by any means. Oh. Although, you know what? Again, the bigger names are not here, and I applaud the Tulio Pajeres of the world for coming out here to fight arguably one of the top five fighters in the entire universe. Yeah, there was definitely some controversy with that. Uh, Federico Lapenda had agreements with a few other Brazilian fighters. Some people may have heard of more. I don't even know if they're really better fighters, but sometimes people just want the big Pajeres man. takes his man down. Nice takedown. Double leg takedown. He took the bigger man down, and, and now he's going to, although I'll tell you what, a good strength move by the Russian as he locks his shoulder over his opponent's head and, and really can't do much right there in that position. Yeah, he'll try to keep him tight so Paletas cannot get up and strike. Paletas, again, a Brazilian fighter, we know he's got some ground skills, probably the better of these two fighters. His forte is Chinese boxing, but that encompasses so many different, different forms of the martial arts. I mean, he, he's really a very talented person, as right now he breaks out of the guard. He's, it's kind of an odd situation as... Uh, Igor is just sitting there, and he takes a knee right in the groin. Yeah, beautiful Ow. shot that is allowed here. And uh, Paul Eric is doing really everything he can and working the body. Uh, Chechen will try and dig in that choke. It looks like he's not quite got it under there. He needs to get that arm a little bit under. He'll try and dig it in. He, you can see Bob Chechen working. Well, you take a knee in the groin, I'll tell you, it takes something out of you. Yeah, he gave up. But he gets up. Unbelievable. Back up to his feet. That was a total strength move. Paletta's trying to get him back down to the ground. <laughs> Igor oh. holding onto the fence. And a great knee by Igor into the midsection of Paletta's. Tulio hanging right in there, though, trying to keep the much bigger Russian against the fence there. A little try of a headbutt there by Voschechen, but really does no damage whatsoever. Yeah, you'll see oh, another knee to the groin as the... Referee says, maybe I don't know what he admonished him for. Yeah, maybe he doesn't want him to do that. I don't know. It was kind of a gentleman's agreement. It's not on our rules, but they, it, there's been a gentleman agreement that there would not be groin shots because, really, it's, it's really unnecessary. Gregory, healed to the back of the leg. What's, what's, what's he trying to accomplish here? He's trying to, get, he's trying to get the big guy back down to the ground where, where size and weight don't make any difference because upstairs you can see that he's feeling the strength of Von Chechen. Down on the ground, you kind of forget about it. You, he, he was able to take him down, so I think he feels that he'll do much better on the ground. Well, in an American phrase, noogies. He's giving him noogies to the side of the head, some taps to the side of the head, and then, and then back comes to Pujeres with a nice headbutt. Yeah, he'll try, and you see he's got his hands wrapped around. He'll try and squeeze to the middle of the back of Vodchechen and pull him to the ground. He's in a great position, but there's nowhere for Vodchechen to fall. Are you surprised at all through our bouts so far this evening as we see some great knee work by Pujeres? And that just hurts, boy, when you get one right on the, the thigh like that. You, and he's taking them lefts and rights, and the Russian doesn't know where they're coming from. But are you surprised as the referee he's breaks them? Up. Are you surprised there's been as much stand-up fighting tonight as you've seen? Only the first bout really went to the, went to the ground. I'm really not. I'm really not. Uh, most of these guys are well-balanced, but again... Uh, the best guy on the ground here tonight should be the American wrestler. I think once American freestyle wrestlers came into the sport, people have said, God, do we want to really go to the ground? These guys have been training. Nick Dutter's been changing 20 years. He's, uh, uh, he, he's a star. He's, he's really, if you go to the ground, I don't even know if the famed jiu-jitsu will be enough to handle it. All right. Well, you saw a nice round kick up high by Pujeres, but it was picked off by the Russian, who's uh, defensively, he's very, very sound. And I, I'm a little surprised that uh, 
Vovchekin is not pressing the attack a little bit more, but I think because of the knees that he's taken in the groin and along the thighs, although there's a nice big left hand there, just misses its mark. I'm a little surprised he's not more aggressive. Yeah, he's, well, there's a couple reasons it could be. Number one, he's a very calm and patient fighter. He's waiting for the other guy to make a mistake. Number two, I don't know, but possibly the weight could be a difference. He's carrying a lot more weight around the midsection, as you mentioned, and it may be slowing him down just a bit. Well, it looks like both men, though, in great shape because they're not breathing very heavily. That was my question about Tulio Pojeras coming in, taking his fight at the last moment. What kind of shape? And he quits. That's it. That's oh. it. <laughs> <laughs> little, little fake out. He said, I wonder. I, You know what? what? What's he doing? I really don't know. He had a lot of respect coming into this fight, told us he would take the fight. The fans are not happy about this one at yeah. all. Bob Chechen, it seemed in our eyes to be a very evenly matched fight at this point. Yeah. Again, Bob Chechen, his first fight, just getting loose. Pilatus may have seen some of Bob Chechen fight, some of his fights, and really didn't want to mix it up too closely. I, I, I am stunned because the Brazilian was right in there. I mean, you're right. Uh, this was a very, very even fight, and I never saw a heavy blow. I didn't see anything that would indicate why Tulio Pojeras would quit, but... Hey, that, those are the facts of life, and uh, now we have our semifinal set up, but let's see if there's something there, Greg. Well, here it is in slow motion. You'll see him working off the jab very nicely. He comes in. He tries to make a takedown. Igor just puts his shoulder down. That stops his opponent and throws him off. All right, well, we are going to set up our semifinals, but first let's go to Don the Dragon. I'm here because my friend, the promoter, Federico Lapenda, is producing my next film, and he invited me to be a guest here and watch the show. Great, and uh, 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 what, uh, what movie are you working on right now? It's called Redemption, and uh, it's, it's going to be kind of like uh, Taxi Driver with De Niro, where my character's a SWAT unit commander, and he goes through a kind of a psychological uh, decline where he almost becomes a bank robber himself. So it's, it's an interesting movie. Federico is uh, producing it. And uh, any martial arts involved? Yeah, there'll be some martial arts, of course, because I'm in it, but uh, mainly action. There'll be regular action, you know, like uh, guns, car crashes, that type of thing. Okay, well, it was very nice being with you. So he's got a lot to prove. He wants to be number one. Let's see. He's going to have to get by this strong young fella to do it. Well, the strong young fellow, Nick Nutter, i got to believe he's going to try and get Varnas down early. That's the way to beat this big guy if you can get him down. And he does the takedown, single leg. Varnas goes on his back, and that's not where he wants to be. Well, he's got to try and keep his hand in there, see if he can get some sort of choke. Again, with the size of the neck that we saw in Nutter, I don't know what he's going to be able to do there. Varlins, if I was him, I would want to be back up on my feet. Let Nutter feel the power like he did in his first fight. He needs to show these guys how strong he is because he is the heaviest hitter here. Well, Nutter is such a great wrestler that I don't know if Varlins would be able to get back up on his feet. We'll have to see. Varlins outweighs his opponent by about 45 pounds, and it would have been 145 pounds about eight months ago. <laughs> yeah, pretty close to that. You can see the polar bear has the foot of the polar bear tattooed on his leg. He's really pushing that now. He's really made a name for himself. And as you said, they really love him. Nutter coming in with some great knees. There's a huge knee to the head. Yeah. And that's the one thing. He's on the side mount. And you can't do that if you're Paul Varland. You've got to get away from those knees. And that was his downfall against Mark Kerr. He just took too many brutal shots to the head with the knees. And uh, now Nutter is in complete control right here as he... He's doing some slapping, some right hands to the side of the face. Nothing too good so far. That one hurt a little bit. He's a big hitter. Varlins is a tough guy. He can take a lot of punishment, but he cannot be effective in this posture. Yeah, he's never tapped out. He will take a beating and keep on ticking. Again, he's a big man. He's a powerful man, but this is not the position he wants to be on. Nick Nutter is a control man, a control freak, if you will. Once he's able to control you, which he's doing here, you can see him pushing the 280-pound man around the ring. Just great strength, great wrestling technique by Nick Nutter as Paul Varlins continues to languish on the bottom here, and I don't know, he's he's not in a favorable position, partner. No, this is not where Varlins wants to be. You can see he needs to at least put let some uh, 
let some strikes go, let Nutter start to feel some of his power, because right now Nutter is just what he, where he wants to be and doing just what he wants to do. When that side mount position, it allows you to, to really throw that knee, throw that leg, and now he, he jumps on top now in a full mount. Yeah, Marlins is in big, big trouble now. Now, uh, Nutter on the side, he also actually probably feels better even from the side. I haven't seen too often a wrestler come into the full mount position. It's more jujitsu style. As you see him unload those big right hands, he's a big, strong guy. You'll see him going for an arm bar underneath here, unable to complete. Good defense, though, by Varlins on that. Oh, not there, that though. That one got through. And Paul Varlins is cut. That one split the eye open very nicely. Over that same eye that was cut about a year oh, ago. Beautiful. That one open-handed, a slap to the side of the face. That one, you can see the blood splatter from that one across the ring. There's a nice cut opened up under the right. I believe it's the left eye. Did you get any blood on you, Greg? Yeah, almost. Oh, man. Look at this. This is. I'll tell you, Nutter is totally in command right now as he has opened the face up of Paul the Polar Bear Varlins. Varlins is down and is in trouble. Yeah, there's a huge mess of blood coming out of there. Now, now Nutter really starting to pay dividends, really working on that eye. He's going to try and rub that right open. Look at him. He's just slapping it. That is a good cut. Yeah, the official's and right headbutt, there. Nice headbutt. The referee just right there, and he may call this if he sees Varlins take too much punishment because it, it, that blood is just streaming out of his face, and that's it. Is that the referee it? stops the fight. Did Varlins, he didn't tap out. No, he did not. Wow. Marlins, the animal that he is, he really came in here and fought tough. Look at the blood all over his face. He took some good shots. Very angry. Angry at himself. He's angry at himself for getting taken down in the opening moments of this fight and never, never was able to do anything about it as the eye really starts to swell up on him. There's a nasty gash that will, of course, require stitches. And Nick Nutter, an impressive performance by the wrestler from the United States as he takes out the polar bear. Yeah, he really did a beautiful job. He's, thus far, Nick Nutter has done everything he told us he was going to do, everything all the fighters knew he was going to do. He was going to be aggressive, he was going to go at him, and he did just that. That's right, and as you know, Federico Lapenda always has great fighters in the wings in case a fighter cannot continue, and this gentleman is a great fighter. Yeah, Von Chechen really has got his hands full with this guy. You can see the confidence in him, though. He's very calm. He's always very patient. He's got a good sweat going already. Again, this should be a very good stand-up fight. Neither one of these guys too experienced on the ground. I expect a lot of punching, a lot of kicking. When it goes to the, round, to the ground, it's anybody's game. All right, it'll be very interesting. I know Nick Nutter is really pulling for Bob Chechen to win this. He wants to face him in the worst way. He's been dreaming about him for months now after that tough, tough loss to him in their other previous fight. So we shall see if the Russian can pull it off. Uh, obviously the heavy favorite here fighting the alternate. And interesting, I don't know if he knows much about this alternate, the Black Devil. Yeah, as you mentioned... Uh, Nutter's been telling us that he wants Vav Chechen, but again, I don't know if he really does. This is a guy that you just can't hurt, and although he's been able to control everybody here tonight, yeah, it'd be interesting to see either one of these fighters, because it will be total striker against total ground fighter in the finals tonight. All right, both pretty big gentlemen as far as uh, physicality, both thick gentlemen, and uh, certainly certainly the Russian Igor Vav Chechen is a little bit bigger than the Black Devil. We'll see what happens. A little bit heavier. I don't know if he's a little bit bigger. Uh, the Devil's a little bit taller. Vavchechen a little bit heavier. Uh, and probably the bigger hitter. But we'll, we'll see. All right. Our final semi-final bout here. We'll see the winner here. We'll go on to the championship against Nick Nutter. As this one is just getting underway. The Devil coming right at Bob Chechen. He's been the one doing the action thus far with a nice jab and a nice leg kick. You said Muay Thai fighter, and boy, the Thai fighter he is as he comes around using those legs effectively early on. Yeah, you'll see Bob Chechen, though, he kind of paws out with that left hand. That's his big technique. He just kind of paws you, draws you in, and a big right hand by Bob Chechen. Boy, I'll tell you what. Those both came up just a bit short. Bob Chechen now trying to take his opponent to the mat. Oh, a huge left hand. Yeah, nice exchange there by both fighters. He's huge left right hand by the Russian, and he just misses with another that just grazes the top of the Black Devil's head.
as the action continues to pick up here in Recife, Brazil, side of Valley Tudo Championship number five. Yeah, both big hitters. These guys really in there exchanging early on in the fight. Anybody's fight so far. Two tough men. Very similar styles. Both with leg kicks. You'll see a lot of those leg kicks in Valley Tudo. Not too many guys throw anything higher than the hips. It's, you risk yourself. You expose yourself to takedowns. You really don't want to do that too much. All right, the chess mask continues here in Bob the middle of the octagon. Bob Chechen will paw. Now a nice exchange by both fighters. What is a good right hand, short right hand, and then a huge looping right that just misses his mark to the face of the Black Devil from Bob Chechen, although he comes back now. Nice round kick to the bottom part of the leg of the Black Devil, and then he brings the knee up. Yeah, he's a big knee, knee fighter. He loves to use his knees, Bob Chechen, when he's in tight. You got to watch out for the knees and the elbows. Tried that again, but he didn't have the leverage. Yeah, the devil just pushing him off. Big, strong kid. Neither one. Okay, now we'll see. They go into the clinch. And again, as we said, nobody knows too much about these guys, either one on the ground. So when they go to the clinch, you never know what to expect. You see Bob Chechen now keeping his knee up on this opponent. He did not like taking that groin shot from his last opponent. Does an alternate, not knowing he's going to get in, will he come out and watch the bouts to see if... To maybe to scout a, a possible opponent or does he wait back in the dressing room area? Sometimes they may. I did not see him out there earlier. Again, most people know, anybody in No Holds Bar knows about Bob Chechen. He is a dangerous man. Well, they can exchange really close in knees that don't do a whole lot, although, again, a combination, though, all the time, that continues to happen. Oh, just misses with the right hand. Bob Chechen does. And the Brazilians say, come on, baby, let's get it on. Yeah, you see, he's not showing a lot of fear here. He's not showing much respect for Bob Chechen at all, and that's really what he needs to do, is get in there, mix it up. Both guys stalking each other. Bob Chechen, again, breathing a little heavy. I don't know how much, if, if any, that weight is affecting him, but he'll, again, he'll use that paw. He kind of sets you up with the paw, and you got to watch out for the big right hand. That's his famous. That's well, what he's known for. The Russian also had a very tough first bout that ended very oddly, as uh, his Brazilian opponent just kind of quit at the end there. But uh, I think because of the wear and tear this big Russian administers, he just wears people out. Yeah, he does. These guys... Oh, he just takes a left hand to the jaw and, and throws down, his opponent down. A beautiful right hand slipped in there, and down goes the devil. But he's right back up on his feet. Boy, the devil, though, landed a huge left hand. Yeah, he did. It was did you see the sweat fly? Very nice exchange by both fighters. But did you see Bob Chechen flinch? No. No. That's the scary part about this guy. He is hard as nails. I've never seen anybody really rock him. But I have seen people really hit him. So that's it'll be interesting to see if one of these guys could really lay one on him. I'm still amazed at the thickness of his legs. He's a physical specimen. Yeah, he really is. And again, the only weight that he's really put on is a little bit around the gut. Hopefully, that won't affect him. Well, it doesn't seem to. I mean, he still looks like he has his quickness. And boy, he's not reluctant to throw the fist. No, but his hands... And, oh, nice headbutt. Boy, in close. He cracks the Black Devil, the side of the head with the head. Pushes him back. And here we go again. A nice little... Tie kick down low. A almost a jumping round kick, but he decides to back off. Probably not a good technique in this type of fight. Yeah, that was a smart move on his behalf. Talking about the Black Devil as he uh, and his opponent, the Russian, Igor Vovchekin, do battle in the middle of the octagon. Again, nice exchanges by both people. Von Chechen keeping his hands down really low. I think the weight may affect him a little bit, but again... His defense is so strong that I don't know if anybody can hurt him. He continues to walk through just about every blow that has landed. I mean, it doesn't, you're right. He never flinches. Normally you see the face of a man when he when he feels pain, he will flinch, he will grimace. Not Igor Volchekin. No, in fact, Monchechin had a fight with uh, Big Paul Varlins and knocked him to the ground. I have never seen anybody be able to punch with that power and knock out the polar bear. He dropped the polar bear to his knees with left-right combinations. Again, he was a few pounds lighter at that point, but this, with this weight, he's saying it's actually made him stronger. Well, the Black Devil has come up with four nice, nice shots to the lower leg of Vovchekin, and he didn't flinch. You're exactly right. But I tell you, he's trying to wear him down. That's five unanswered blows with a round kick to the leg. And Vovchekin is just standing there, maybe getting his breath. 
Yeah, he seems like the little, uh, a little bit more tired of the two. But again, I think his punches are doing more damage to the Black Devil. That, re that left leg is getting more and more crimson, too, turning red as he continues to absorb blows on that left thigh. And I'm talking about the Russian Igor Volchekin. Crowd is into this one. Yeah, this is really a well-balanced fight. Both fighters really standing in there, throwing everything they got. They've got to be getting tired now. Fights continue. It's been one of the longer fights of the night. Both guys still standing in there. Back to the jab is Vom Chanchen. Boy, Vom Chanchen, look at that, takes in, grabs the leg, and uh, Nice oh! takedown. He just Beautiful little, little judo throw there. I was say, a little sweeping left foot there that knocked his opponent down, but he's right back up again. And now the devil tries to take him down. So neither one of them really afraid to take down the other opponent, but I don't know if he wants to really... Depends, I guess, on the fashion that they go down. The Brazilian now down on the ground, taking a little breather here. As is the Russian. Putting his hands on his hips, <laughs> trying to rethink things. 30 minutes is the time limit for these fights. We're more than halfway into it now. Brazilian taunting the Russian. Bob tension. Igor throws a knee that time in close, but he takes a nice right to the temple. Throws a good right himself that just misses its mark. Yeah, both fighters, you can really start to see the fatigue. Come on now. The knees aren't going on. Vinchanch, and there goes one. I was waiting for that to happen. Yeah, because, I've seen that I mean, before. He's, he's, he's known. He's got very powerful knees. The guy hits you with anything. And again, we see people just drop like flies. A big right hand that Boy, misses that's again. What a huge right hand. No, that one did catch. Caught him right on the cheek. A lot of sweat out there yeah. and as they slip and slide on this mat, and they're kind of moving over to a drier area <laughs> led by the referee. Smart move. Never had to see that before. Me neither. That was very courteous. Can't hold that. You cannot hold. Get just don't slap his hands, Greg. Oh, that's not you. <laughs> Never mind. Yeah, they don't like those hands. You're not allowed to hold the fence. It's a good technique by some people. You can see him, the Brazilian, trying to keep Von Chechen close. And then he, he threw strike. a knee. Had a lot of leverage with uh, holding that screen. Uh, that's, that's not very fair. Yeah, it could really help you, or it depends, or hurt you. It depends what side of the fence you're on. There you go. All right. A couple of jabs and a nasty-looking right hand by the uh, Brazilian. That, that was almost like a girl punch. <laughs> He's getting tired. Yeah. There was a kick in the groin, is, and is Igor, Igor, I would... What a class act Igor is. Yeah, but I don't think... He, he's not stopping, is he? He just wants a break? What happened there? No, the Russian got kicked in the groin, and he's giving his man a... Okay, he's just saying, saying, don't do it. Yeah, don't do it, and Igor did bow to him in a show of respect and uh, an apology, and he's saying, come on now, shake hands, and the referee makes everything copacetic, and here we go again. I'll tell you, this marathon continues. Yeah, Igor's taking some big shots to the groin. Now a nice left-right commonite by Igor Von Chachin. On a huge oh, right hand. Now he's unloading. Yeah. Now he's letting it go. And the Brazilian said, come on, baby, as he slips. The footing's really tough on that side of the ring. Very sweaty over there as both men continue to slip. And a great left hand landed by the Black Devil, but back comes Igor With Von Chachin. Really a lot of action. I don't know if people can really understand how exhausted these guys are. Oh, and the Russian just threw him down like a doll and an elbow to the face. He's on a side mount now, and he's in a great shot, a great position, although it may be foreign to him, Greg Friedman. He's not a ground, a ground, he does ground skills, I should say. Oh, beautiful right hand. But hands. look at the right hand you, and me, the I, knee. Yeah, the big patented knee and the big right hand. This is what he likes to do. Gets into the full mount position. Smart move. You don't, this guy does not have to hit someone too many times down on the ground for them to feel a lot of pain. Big right hands there slipping in. And he's just mugging his man. He continues to kind of toss him around down there to try and get leverage to land his shot as he throws a right to the ribs and comes back up to the head as he strikes right over the ear. Yeah, the Brazilian. Oh, this one's right over the eye now as he gets his head turned. Yeah, he's got to be really tired now. Both fighters, especially the Brazilian, because he's trying to fight from his back. Von Chechen can kind of rest in this position. He's got all his weight on the Brazilian. Oh, little Big short right hand. Rides, yep. Yeah, those are getting in, and those are hurting. Again, this guy hits so hard, and that's it. Wow. He taps out, and I'll tell you what, the fans love it. They appreciate the effort, but the Black Devil, as soon as he went down on his back, Von Chechen 
was on a side mount, landed a knee, a couple of thunderous right hands, then he got on top on a full mount, and he worked him over, and then he taps out. One of the great fights of tonight, really one of the great fights ever. Both guys really well balanced on their feet, really kicking and punching, two experienced, very experienced stand-up fighters going toe-to-toe -to -toe the entire fight. When it went to the ground, the Brazilian ran out of juice, and again, what we see in most of these fights is it comes down to the heart. Who has the heart of a champion? Who is willing to endure when they have a broken hand, when they have a black eye, when they have broken toes? Who can continue to endure? And Bob Chenshin has had the heart of a champion, and that's why he's going to the finals against Nick Nutter. And I'll tell you what, this ought to be awesome. Yeah, these guys have both been waiting to see each other again. They happen to have great camaraderie. They've been hanging out with each other. They really have become friends. They really know, respect each other. But when it gets into the octagon... Well, Bob Chenchen has the edge psychologically, I believe. Yeah, I really believe so, too. He's been so nice. Uh, Nutter said to me, it's so hard to be angry with this guy. It's so hard to get up for a fight when you have a guy as friendly as, as Von Chanchen is. Well, he the last time they fought, though, very controversial. Nutter actually was on top and was just landing some vicious blows and, and, and seemed to have his man incapacitated, the Russian, and they broke it up. The official broke it up, and then about 25 minutes in, Igor finally just overtook him with sure power. Yeah, it's, it's really tough to say. Everybody's got their opinions of every fight, and things sometimes don't end up as they're expected to, but this one should be a great match. And right, we're getting ready to rumble here in the black trunks. Igor Vovchanchin against the American Nick Nutter with the red knee pads. Knee protection there. And oh, my God. Huge knee. Immediately, he, Nutter charges in and catches a knee right on the button. Nutter's He's out. He's, he's out. out. It's over! It is over! Nutter is stone cold out! Up over the top rope comes Coleman to see his man. They're rolling over Nutter. Here comes the emergency crew. Oh my goodness! He got caught. The, he, Bob Chacha did exactly what he needed to do and wanted to do, which was catch Nutter, soften him up before he comes in, and he hit him right on the button. We'll get to take a uh, look at that in slow motion, hopefully, here in a minute. Well, hopefully this young man's okay as... Uh Immediately, Igor Vovchenchen goes right over to his friend and opponent tonight. Yes, he is conscious, it looks like. He, yeah, his eyes are opening. He was not cold, Greg Friedman. He caught a knee right on the button. This is what you have to do against a, a freestyle wrestler or a jiu-jitsu man who wants to go for the takedown. you got to soften him up coming in. If you don't soften him up, you want to you wanna knock him out. He knocked him out. He hit him with a great shot right on the button, and this one is over. And I, Watch this. This is incredible. The opening move of this fight. See, what he does here, it appears, let's, let's take a look at it here. He tries to do a double leg and walks right into it, right on the square of the face. And down he went. Unbelievable. That knee hit him. You hit it right on the button, right in the face, right on the chin. And that's the greatest place to knock somebody out. And he knocked him out cold. Yeah, what a freestyle wrestler would want to do is probably have shot to the side, try and do a single leg. He went straight into a guy who is known for his knees, and he walked right into a beautiful knee, and that one was over. I am so glad to see that he is up, and uh, he is conscious, and they both shake hands, and great sportsmanship here, but your champion right there of our World Valley Tudo Championship number five, Nutter. Igor Vovchanchin. Nutter is still totally rocked. I don't think he quite knows who he is or where he is. He's. I, I don't think we'll see him on the beach later. He's like, what happened? He's talking to Mark Coleman, and Coleman's saying, you just took the most vicious knee you'll ever take from our champion right there, Igor Vovchenkin. Yeah, Nutter's still very weary, not quite knowing where he is. He's, he's a little bit confused right now. You can see it in his eyes. He doesn't really know. It looks like he's saying, didn't we just hug? I'm not sure. I don't remember if we just hugged or not. But look at that. Two there great champions. Two great champions. They really deserve to be here tonight. They both fought hard. Wow. Boy, what a show. I'll tell you, Real Sports has put on another incredible show. And let's go up to the...